people, welcome back to my channel. Um, yeah, so I have my hair in a bun uh, today because I'm doing one of those uh, hair masks. <laughs> Actually, fun story, before we're going to dive in here to uh, standards of clinical practice, we're going to pick up where we left off with older adults. But before we dive in, of course, I have a funny story. Um, Actually, first of all, I do not look good with my hair pulled back um, based on my face shape, but I did it because I try to look ugly in these videos because it's studying videos, you know. Anyway, so uh, I actually had a client yesterday and, you know, in the office we wear um, hair, what do they call shower caps? Yeah, over our ha hair. And this client was just like, you guys should be doing hair masks, like, and just keep them in all day, you know, since you're already wearing shower caps. And I thought that that was so funny, and she's, she was so right. Um, I'm doing a hair mask now, though. Um, it wouldn't really be sanitary to do it at work, and of course, I, I couldn't say that in the moment. <laughs> but there you go, that's why it was inspired. Anyway, so we're going to pick up where we left off with older adults. If you guys checked out the first two videos, you'll notice that pretty much everything... Um, is the same. It's just certain areas of each category are different. So um, for since this is the first one in this uh, video, I'm going to go over everything for older adults and then I'll just let you know for the next population what changed. We'll probably just get through two populations in this video because it's going to be 25 minutes long. I follow the Pomodoro, Pomodoro, I guess that's how you pronounce it, study method. Um, okay, so I'm going to set the timer 25 minutes. Alright, so older adults. And of course I'm going to read it out loud and tell you some anecdotal stories to help you guys remember the information a little bit better. So first we have, I'm starting right here in case you guys are following along. Um, these standards of clinical practice are designed specifically for music therapists working in settings with geriatric clients. Um, geriatrics is a very, like, blanket term, um, so we'll, we'll dive in to a little bit more specifics. Uh, the music therapist will adhere to the general standards of clinical practice uh, and specific standards of geriatric settings. The music therapist will also adhere to the standards and um, application of music therapy services. So here's where each um, population is a little different. It's the second paragraph. So in this one, and I'm even gonna like write with my purple pen that I got from Planet Fitness because I am a member there. Um, I'm gonna bracket it because this is what changes per population. The music, music therapy with clientele in a geriatric setting may be defined as the, as the specialized use of music with emphasis on development restoration, maintenance um, of each individual at the highest possible level of functioning. So I'm going to dive into this a little bit more so it kind of sinks in. Okay, so when it comes to, and you guys, like in undergrad, you know, well, at least at my university, we had a didactic um, practicum. We had um, a medical practicum and we had a psychiatric practicum. And all of that really meant was the focus of the practice, the focus of the music therapy at that facility. So at times, you know, didactic, that's a learning-based music therapy uh, approach, facility approach in some regard. Um, so, but like that learning approach to music therapy could actually be used for adults. It's not always for client or not always for kids. So if we're, if this is a geriatric setting or geriatric music therapy, they don't necessarily mean older adults, if that makes sense. Not all the time. It's just, you have to be focusing a geriatric music therapy type of session type of approach, you're focusing on developmental risk, restoration and maintenance, okay? So usually that happens with older adults, and by older, I mean over the age of like 65 um, for the most part, and, um, and that's what it is. So, but you can have, you can do development, you can do restoration, you can do maintenance with a five-year-old, like in some regard, you know, it really depends on the diagnoses. 
So with older adults, um, when I worked in acquired brain injury, there were times I did take a geriatric approach to clients. And the clients, they weren't really that old. They were maybe 30, but we would be maintaining their highest level of functioning. Okay, so keep that in mind that like, Geriatric clients doesn't always, geriatric music therapy doesn't always mean that you're working in a nursing home, okay? It's the approach to music therapy and the focus of the approach. So I'll say it one more time. <laughs> Development, restoration, and maintenance of individuals at the highest possible level of functioning. But for the most part, we focus on maintenance. Um, moving forward, we have standard referral and acceptance. A client will be accepted for music therapy. These are the same for every population, okay? So it's going to be accepted. Um, they're a good candidate for music therapy, cognitive, communicative, psychological, educational, social, physiological needs. Um, a client may be referred to an initial music therapy session by the music therapist, members or of other disciplines, self parents, guardians, or other representatives, a final decision to accept the client will be based on a music therapist. Um, and I said this in the last video, referral for music therapy, usually it's the facility will get a client and then they'll recommend this client for music therapy. Sometimes the parents, if it's a child, parents will want the client to do music therapy. Sometimes um, it depends on like another music therapist if like a music therapist is leaving or the client is going to another facility with a different music therapist usually finding clients isn't your responsibility if you work for a facility if you're an independent contractor then this would be your responsibility as an independent contractor because i said this in the last video become friends with the primary care physician of a population that you like so if you like pediatrics become um friends with pediatric doctors become friends with like doctors who specialize in working with older adults okay because most insurance companies need the primary care physician to recommend a specialized treatment plan and in this case music therapy falls under a specialized treatment plan okay so if you if you want clients that's a really good way to get them Next is a uh, standard assessment. Again, this is the same for every population. Uh, it will be, you'll be assessed through a psychological, cognitive, communicative, social, physiological functioning, and you'll focus on the client's needs and strengths. You'll also determine the client's response to music, musical skills, musical preferences. Uh, again, with assessment, so, you need to, sometimes the client will already have a goal, an objective, a plan, something that the physician or another music therapist or the parents maybe want the client to work on. So the goals, it's about 50-50. Sometimes the goals for like in the assessment are already there and in the assessment you're really just assessing musical skills, musical preferences. Um, other times you will have to create new goals or maybe create your own own um but uh, it's usually pretty obvious and if you're working in the same population it's sometimes similar goals like when i worked in acquired brain injury um it was usually memory that was oh, always new memory and socialization for the most part um okay so then the music therapy assessment will explore the client's culture not necessarily if there's not really that you the assessment to some degree sometimes can be free um so they want you to do it as quick and efficiently as possible so usually you don't really get time to do culture but you can look it up in the file um all music therapy assessments will be um appropriate for the client's client chronological age diagnoses, functioning level, and culture. Um, in terms of older adults, even though an older adult might be 70, they could mentally be 18. Um, I won't bring up acquired brain injury. I had clients that were 30 years old, but they mentally acted like they were six. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And then they talk about verbal and nonverbal interventions. You can kind of tell how you really should see like what kind of attracts the client. How do they respond to you moving closer with the guitar or nodding your head or facial expressions. 
Okay, record the schedule and procedures used in the music therapy treatment. Evaluate, this is still um, assessment. Evaluate the client's response. Wait, is it still assessment? No, it's not. I apologize. I'm moving on to the next page. Okay, so we did assessment. And then, uh, okay, all, it's 2.4. All interpretations of uh, test results will be appropriate norms whatever the client the music therapy assessment procedures will become part of the client's file uh, final decision to accept for music therapy services is the interdisciplinary team um again a lot of times music therapy sometimes got pushed by the wayside or sometimes like you would argue like oh i want this client one hour every week and you having them one hour might cut into their PT time and the client might actually need PT a little bit more than music therapy so then you, your time would get cut short. That's what they mean by um, when they talk about working with the interdisciplinary team. Uh, results, conclusions, and impl implications of the music therapy assessment will become part of the client's music therapy program. Um, you're going to use the assessment for the beginning portion of the, like, when you start working with the client. Um, but then you're going to start to know the client, so you won't necessarily need to refer back to it that often, if at all. When assessment indicates the client's need for services, the music therapist will make an appropriate referral. Um, and then the music therapy assessment will be individualized based on the client's level of functioning. They have according to the student's level of functioning. I think that that is a misprint, just to let you guys know, because I'm all about throwing shade. Treatment planning, standard three. The music therapist will prepare and write an individualized treatment program based on the music therapy assessment, the client prognosis, and um, other sources. Okay. And this is all the same for every population. Help the client attain and maintain maximum level of functioning. Comply with the federal, state, and uh, regulations. Find type frequently and duration of music therapy involvement. Um, so as musicians, we know that it's better to practice for a shorter period of time more frequently than to cram a practice session. And music therapy is the same exact way, you know, um, you want to, it's better to do like 15 minute sessions three times a week than to do an hour session once a week. But a lot of times it's not necessarily feasible if the client has to go to other therapy sessions. Um, insurance for the most part will not pay for music therapy three times a week. Um, yeah, some people have gotten away with it, like what they'll do, so, um, they'll, so it's like they bill out for an hour of music therapy, um, but they actually end up splitting it up amongst four sessions. I've heard, like, therapists do that. I don't know if, um, I don't really know if it's the, the best. I guess it depends on the situation. Like, it, with, in my experience, if I did something like that, I'd end up doing notes for these sessions, and then the time would end up taking up, like, the, time, the session time, the note time, it would end up taking up more than an hour, so then I wouldn't get reimbursed fairly. But, again, that, that was my experience. It was my facility. But a lot of people do do that to kind of get away, like, to still get paid for insur from insurance, but, you know, um, still get their way. So we have goals that focus on the assessment needs and strengths of the client, objectives that create um, an, a stated goal with estimated time frame. So I said this in the last video too. Goals is like when you go to a meeting or you write a paper or you talk to the family or whatever the case may be, like that's the goal. Like we are, you know, we are working on ambulation. We're working on allowing this client to walk. Okay, that's the main goal. And if they're able to walk well, then they won't, you know, I don't know, need a wheelchair. They'll be able to transfer themselves from the bathtub to the toilet, you know? Um, so that's the main goal, right? And, and it's always important. I always did, like, 
goals, I guess they would maybe last like two years ish. And depending, depending, it really depends on the client. Like uh, most of my clients, it was a sustained goal. So we, it didn't really change, but that's like the goal is like what you write about in the annual report. Would you tell the um, parents or the family? Sometimes you can even tell the client if um, that's appropriate. Objectives are actually what you do on a daily basis. So, and that's like kind of, I'm going to stress that that's why it's important for objectives to be like stated and obtainable and understand it, uh, understandable because like, because what ends up happening is if you write an objective, oh, client will move their feet to the beat. Like, First of all, how, you can't measure that, okay? Like move their feet to the beat. You may think you can measure it because you know what, oh, you know what it looks like when a client moves their feet to the beat, but clients don't necessarily move in a way that we move, you know? Um, clients, like moving their feet might consist of moving a toe, might consist of twitching their foot, might consist of lifting their foot, you know? So that so there's that's number one. Um, uh, but number two and the most important is if you tell your boss, oh, I'm working with this client on this goal. Client will move their feet to the beat, um, and that's what we're doing. That's what we do every week, right? And then the, your boss like walks by the music room, and you're over here like playing Disney songs. The boss is gonna be like. What well, what are you doing all day? I thought the client was supposed to be moving their feet to the beat and like now you're playing Disney songs and like I don't get it. Like what why am I even paying you? Right? <laughs> so that's why um when it comes to objectives you want it to be measurable, obtainable and you want it to be for a certain time period. So client will tap lower extremities to a drum beat for 10 minutes throughout the session, okay? So then when your boss walks by and they hear drum music, or maybe they do hear a Disney song like um, that has a strong drum beat, they'll be like, oh, well, well they, they did mention like drumming and they did mention feet and uh, okay, okay, I guess, I guess it is happening because I hear this drum and that's what they said that they were going to do. So do you get what I'm saying? Like, and then plus also it's a lot easier to track a client moving their lower extremities for 10 minutes, you know, or you could, some people do, oh, they'll move their lower extremities five times. Some people do that. But, um, but it's much easier for you to track that than just a client tapping to the beat. If, if you understand and like I, I can't mention it enough like clients do not react in the way that you think they're gonna react so you met you know what it looks like for somebody to tap their foot right but sometimes a client actually all, almost all of my clients never tapped their foot in the, the traditional sense they always that they reacted to the music they just did it in a different way and if you don't really gen if it's a general goal you can't necessarily track it accurately moving forward um specified procedures including music and materials um provide periodic evaluation and appropriate modification optimize according to the best judgment of the music therapist the program plan of other disciplines establish principles of normal growth and development you can always co-treat um i i tried to do that sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't and i tried um change and to meet the priority needed during a client crisis intervention that's like most important because like i said clients react in ways that we can't predict and we don't understand so uh knowing and understanding what a crisis is for the particular client or group you're working with is extremely important is this person does this person have verbal freakouts physical freakouts do they seize you know because seizing is could be considered a crisis for certain clients and you want to know what to do in order to handle that situation appropriately 
Uh, complying with infection control pro procedures, I'm sure that we all know those. Uh, incorporate medical precautions as needed. Okay, implementation uh, standard four. The music therapist will deliver services according to the individual plan. Strive for the highest level of quality of musical involvement consistent with the functioning level of the client. Uh, there's, I worked with older adults who like wanted to listen to kids music because like I said they were like mentally four even though they were physically like 24. Uh, music therapists will reflect on their abilities as a musician. Again, I don't really like this one because when you're entry level, you tend to get like a little um, tough on yourself. You, you definitely want to reflect on the session. What could you do better musically in the session? Um, and journaling really helps that. But don't go around critiquing like how you played piano in that session. That's only going to like harm your ego. Um, appropriate music instruments and materials to provide the best sound. Uh, yeah, this is important because you have to remember that like piano is good. Yeah, like if you're playing piano man, obviously you should probably use a piano. But is a piano really feasible? Like if this client needs to be engaged, you know, and you need to be up in their face in order to get them engaged, a guitar would probably be better. Maybe the client reacts better to the sound of a string instrument or to the sound of a drum instrument than a piano. You have to be thinking about these things when you pick the appropriate instrument to play because it's not obvious. As musicians, we think it's obvious because we hear a certain instrument playing and we have really good oral skills obviously but like in therapy sometimes you're going to pick instruments that wouldn't necessarily be traditional because you're trying to attract and communicate with a client um you music therapists will make the best effort to ensure safety and quality of client care um and then you want to make sure that if there's any recent advances in safety and infection control that you practice those I hope by this point we've all learned what to do and who to listen to in terms of infection control. You check out your state website, maybe your county website if it, that updates frequently, and the CDC. Those are the only people you trust when it comes to infection control. You do not go to social media for infection control. Maintain close communication with other individuals involved in the client. Yes, that is true. Okay, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to think where, I don't know where we are. Ah, here we go. Okay, so then we have, um, in terms of older adults, this is like what's different. Um, we have, and this is 2.9, just to let you guys know, of her following along. Um, music therapy assessment will include current diagnosis and history will be performed in, uh, in a manner congruent with the client's level of functioning areas to address. So for geriatric, older, well, older adults slash the geriatric music therapy approach, we have motor skills, uh, reality, orientation, emotional status, spatial and body concepts, long and short term memory, attending behaviors, infection control, precautions, sensory, uh, perception, independent functioning, and adaptive needs, coping skills. So I'm going to move this over here. I'm like looking at this and I'm like, I feel like it's pretty darn the same as what we did for addictive disorders. Let me just check on that real quick um, and then we'll call it a day. Like, wasn't it the same? Oh no, there was a lot more when it came to addictive disorders. Okay. So the first chunk of each section oh i didn't i don't think i went through documentation or termination services but the point that i'm trying to make is that everything is the same okay so for each population um 
you have the second paragraph that really explains the music therapy approach. And then you have here, this is in the assessment category, you have all the different um, goals for the most part that you will work on with this client. Um, older adults, we, I definitely worked on pretty much everything except for infection control precautions because like that wouldn't really be an appropriate goal for a client uh, considering they didn't really have a say. Like if the, if the institute did something infection control wise, that's the way it was. Um, but yeah, but everything that's listed here, motor skills, reality orientation, emotional status, spatial and body concepts, long and short term memory, attending behaviors, infection, well, that was the only one that wasn't, uh, sensory perception, independent functioning, adaptive needs, and coping skills. That's like all appropriate to the geriatric approach to music therapy, aka older adults sometimes. Not all the time, but for the most part. Um, I'm just going to go over real quick because I didn't read off implementation, documentation, or termination, uh, or continuing ed, but like it, it's all the same for every single um, population. It's, you know, wh whatever. I'll read it off anyway because in the next couple videos, I'm not going to be reading this off. Implementation, the music therapist will deliver. This is standard four. Um, unless I did do it. I don't think I did. Um, strive for the highest level of quality. Oh, no, I did because I talked about um, musicianship, termination. I talked about not judging yourself. Yeah, don't ever judge your musical skills. And don't let anybody in the working profession judge your music skills. Um, in terms, before we go, because here it has a standard seven, you know, it talks about continuing education and uh, supervision. On the exam, there were a lot of supervision questions. And I wa do want to point out before we end, um, and I record the next video, that supervision, like, you, when, when you're taking this board certification exam as a, um, you know, undergrad, you don't really think about supervision, at least I certainly didn't. I was like really concerned with getting a job. Um, and, but you know, you're capable of becoming a, after you pass this board certification exam, I don't really care if you're 21 or if you're 41. Like you are capable of being a supervisor like right after you pass this board certification exam. And especially on my exam, they had lots of questions about being a supervisor and how a supervisor should react and what they should do and all this kind of all those clinical questions are involving what a supervisor should do for a client or for a student um now most facilities they won't let you supervise i think you have to work like a year sometimes in order to get a practicum student other times you have to work like maybe two years in order to get it or three in order to get an intern an intern but um Honestly, after you pass this exam, you can get an intern. I don't really care how old you are. I don't really care if you don't have that much experience because taking this exam actually allows you. And you have to remember, as music therapists, we have already reached the self-actualization category in Maslow's hierarchy, Maslow hierarchy. So there you go. Um, yeah, so that's my little pep talk. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Talk to you guys later. Bye!